Locked On Podcast Network presents Locked On Sports Today. The Bengals' season is on the brink. How will they attack this critical division matchup with the Ravens? Also, the Warriors seem to be more focused on fighting than basketball. And Justin Fields is back to do what exactly? I'm Peter Bukowski, starting your day with the can't miss stories and biggest debates in sports. You're locked on sports today. Searching all major sports. Found. Let's start with the biggest story. Hey, look, an actually fun and exciting Thursday night football game. It's the Bengals and the Ravens set to square off Joe Burrow versus Lamar Jackson. Two defenses reeling after what happened to them last week. James Rapine from Locked on Bengals joins me now. And James, this is a Bengals season that has not quite gone the way that they thought it would. We've talked about that early in the season. It seemed like they got the ship right a little bit. And then CJ Shroud happened. Where is your confidence level in this team as an AFC contender right now? A week ago, Peter, it was really confident. And then you're right, Noah Brown. <laughs> I think Noah Brown's still open. I think he's still running around Paycor Stadium wide open and just uh, making big plays, 620-plus yard plays the other day. And Noah Brown who, right? That's what some of the listeners and watchers are, are saying right now. But yeah. uh, he's very, very real. And uh, the Bengals, they look vulnerable really in every facet uh, of their team against that Houston Texans Fran or team that uh, you're right has a franchise quarterback in CJ Stroud, but you would expect this defense to figure it out at some point, and they didn't. And to make matters worse, now they're going to be without Sam Hubbard for a second straight game. Trey Hendrickson expected to play, but man, I have a hard time believing he's going to be anywhere close to 100%. So you wonder if he's going to be on a snap count, how effective he'll be. And we know T. Higgins isn't going to play either. So this is a shorthanded Bengals team on a short week having to travel and uh, deal with a, a Ravens team that's probably looking for uh, a bit of a bounce back action this week as well because uh, of what happened against the Browns. So build me the case. What does a Bengals win look like? What do they have to do to get that dub? Well, let's start with the defense, even though I promise I'll talk about Joe Burrow in just a second. This defense cannot get crushed on the ground. And that's the other part of it. It wasn't just CJ Stroud the other day. It was uh, a Texans running game that hasn't been good. Bottom of the league and close to it. And I believe they're 25th now after going for 188 yards. Devin Singletary averaged five yards a carry. And so you look at this Ravens rushing offense, the best in the NFL. Obviously, we know about Lamar Jackson and how dynamic he is. Keaton Mitchell looks like he shot out of a cannon, even though he gets three touches a game. All three touches go for big plays. So, and, and who knows, maybe he's mixed in a bit more since he's been so successful. So I think it starts there and just limiting these explosive plays that they gave up last week. And then on offense, I think we know the answer. No T Higgins. It's got to be the Joe and Jamar show. Can you yeah. take it on the road? Can you go to Baltimore backs against the wall, your defense railing a bit, no T Higgins. And can Joe and Jamar do what we've seen them do a lot over the past couple of years. But I think the whole world, including the Ravens know how, Joe wants to to target J Jamar and, and find him downfield. So they're going to try to take it away. But I think that's where it starts on offense. That's where it ends on offense. Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase finding a way to produce big plays. We talked to Joe Marino yesterday from Locked on Bills, and, and they are in a little bit of a different situation, a little bit more desperate, it seems, to find uh, what's going on there. But it's not like their record is that different from what's going on in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. and, and so Joe said he's he's worried now that Buffalo may have missed their window, that you only have usually a three or four year window with a core group to go win a title. How concerned are you that the Bengals are pressing up against that window? I'm not, I'm not. And, and I, I think I get the logic and in, in, in everything behind it. I also think that we just, we don't know what pieces are going to be here, but that doesn't mean they're going to be bad pieces. T Higgins in a contract here, DJ reader really key player on Thursday night, by the way, they need him to be great against the run it is in a contract year. So I, I totally get the argument and people from afar saying, ah, well, their window may close, but I, I don't know. I don't know what players they're going to bring in. Who's actually not going to resign. So I'm not there yet. And I haven't closed the door on, on this season for the Bengals, obviously, or even the division. Now, 
Can they win the division for a third straight year? No team has done it. Obviously, they're five and four and in last place in the North. But I, I do think if they get a win on Thursday night, and it's much easier said than done, that they're they're going to be right there in the thick of it and have a real shot. So I'm not there yet. I'm not the the one to to press the panic button either. And if you see a lot of these guys that were part of that Super Bowl run leave this offseason, well, then, yeah, I, I think there will be some concern. Stay up to date all year on the Cincinnati Bengals by subscribing to Locked On Sports today and Locked On Bengals on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. And thanks for making Locked On Sports today your first listen. Coming up, the Warriors need to figure some things out in a hurry. Before we get to that, the Browns got some more bad news. We're into the second half of the NFL season, and now is the best time to turn your sports knowledge into cash with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, what are you waiting for? The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, spreads, player props, over-unders, teasers. I got a tease going this weekend and a lot more. There's also a lot of weekly promos and boosts to give you plenty of opportunities to increase those payouts. Thursday Night Football is a spicy matchup for once. The Ravens get the home field bump against the Bengals, but FanDuel sees this as a close game. Baltimore favored by three and a half. I have the Ravens at three and a half. You can also combine bets for a bigger payout. Same game parlays are a great way to enjoy watching any game. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and do the NFL season right. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. And Locked On has launched the first ever national sports streaming channel 24-7 on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On. Plus, our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel. Deshaun Watson will miss the remainder of the 2023 season. And I'll be honest, I truly thought somebody had hacked Mary Kay Cabot. Um, You know, the tweet came up, Deshaun Watson to miss the rest of the season, and it was just like, there's no way. Somebody had to have, you know, broken in her, So, and then all of a sudden the floodgates opened up. Um, and now we learn the absolute worst is that Deshaun Watson suffered a different shoulder injury in the Baltimore Raven game, most likely on a run where Patrick Queen hit him in his throwing arm. And, you know, for future reference in future in the future, Deshaun Watson, just please slide. Just please, for the love of God, slide. And Deshaun, to his credit, you know, spoke with the doctor, said, look, if I got a needle up every Sunday, I'll needle up every Sunday. And doctor's trying to tell him that, you know, another hit where it's already broken on that shoulder and, you know, the shoulder would be, you know, messed up possibly forever. And you get the ungodly terrible news that after finally seeing Desh- peak Deshaun Watson for the Cleveland Browns in that game in Baltimore, and somehow amazingly enough, he made it to halftime, threw halftime, got to the second half and went 14 of 14, ran the ball, read his, led his team to a game-winning drive, And somehow it's all over. The Buffalo Bills decision to move on from offensive coordinator Ken Dorsey is personal on multiple levels for quarterback Josh Allen. Dorsey has worked with Allen since 2019, first as the team's quarterback's coach. In January 2022, after another playoff exit at the hands of the Kansas City Chiefs, Allen successfully lobbied for Dorsey to get the offensive coordinator job. Bills coach Sean McDermott said the decision to fire Dorsey was based on what took place over the course of the season. Quarterbacks coach Joe Brady was named interim offensive coordinator in Dorsey's place. Allen did acknowledge the dire situation they find themselves in. The clock's ticking on what we can do this season, and it starts this Sunday to try and turn this thing around. The Mavericks did what they have done all season long and lit up the scoreboard in a win over the Wizards in D.C. The Mavs won this game. Kyrie sat out. The Mavericks lost their game to the Pelicans in a real bad way. And so Mm -hmm. in this game... We got to talk about just the bounce back. The Mavericks needed to go in this game and take care of business. The same way for a lot of the start of the season. We've heard some people say, well, the Mavericks haven't played anybody this season. I don't care. Yeah. You got to take care of business. They did not do that last year. Like it's got to be one test and then the other, right? The first test to me was, can you take care of business? Is your floor at a certain point? Do you, are you a good enough team to where you beat these teams? The wizards, the 
Hornets, the Grizzlies who are bad right now, the San Antonio Spurs, the even the Brooklyn Nets. Like, do you beat those teams, right? And now the Mavericks have answered that question through a big portion of this start of the season. Starting nine and three, the Mavericks win this game tonight and take care of business on a second out of a back to back where they travel. And the Cy Young Award winners announced in both the AL and NL on Wednesday night. Blake Snell won the NL Cy Young after his magnificent season with the San Diego Padres. And it was Yankees ace Garrett Cole winning his first Cy Young in the AL. Snell became the seventh pitcher to win a Cy Young in the American League and the National League, while Cole was a unanimous choice for his first career Cy Young. The Timberwolves and Warriors squared off in... Uh, apparently a blood feud on Tuesday night and it turned into a UFC match by the end of it. In fact, it took just a few minutes to turn into that uh, first Clay Thompson and Jaden McDaniels getting after it. Rudy Gobert steps in, tries to make peace. It seemed Draymond Green certainly did not see it that way. Rudy Gobert all of a sudden in a headlock and now Draymond Green will miss the next five games and three quarters of a million dollars in lost wages. Cyrus Satsas from Locked On Warriors joins me now and and cyrus this was uh an ugly moment i, I think for both teams for the nba uh, what do you make of the punishment now handed down on draymond green it's it's expected it's actually um not quite as i thought it was going to be closer to, t- to 10 games mm. uh i was on another program today and they had an over ou of four and i i bet the over obviously look and and this is cited in the suspension as well Draymond's history came into play. I mean, yeah. uh, the league no longer is hiding their disdain for Draymond Green's actions. Um, th- their tolerance of him is done, minimal to, to nil. Uh, the suspension actually is costing him more than three quarters of a million. If the reports I'm reading are correct, it's closer to seven hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. So add mm. another twenty-five there, and then, uh, or I guess the twenty-five might count for the same additional uh, fee because or. or uh, costs whatever you're calling it because clay thompson and jd mcdaniels are also fined 70 uh, twenty five thousand dollars so i guess with the sure. twenty five thousand dream on us to pay seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in suspensions i guess that's where you get 775 and but no i'm not surprised in the least bit the only thing i will uh i don't know if there's a pushback but just maybe to add to what you said i don't think rudy gave gobert was innocent in all this it, it is a little weird it, it, and, and i'm not defending dream on green's actions i mean look you watch that clip and Rudy Gobert saw his life flash before his eyes for very good reasons. I mean, he tapped out. He, he did tap out. You saw the way Steve Kerr and Kenny Atkinson reacted. I thought that was like a, a, an incredible moment of that whole thing. Like they were worried about Rudy Gobert. So, uh, but you, so there, that, the, the whole thing was insanity, um, but I don't think Rudy Gobert was innocent. I mean, if you look at, there's a, there's a clip of it from a different angle. It came from, uh, mid court in the stands, right behind the scores table, and it shows Rudy Gobert. Whatever you label that, an attempt to break up a fight. I don't think putting other people in chokeholds is breaking up a fight, and and that is what Rudy Gobert did. Not at the level that Draymond did. Clearly, there's different levels to this, but Rudy Gobert, I don't think was innocent. But clearly, Draymond Green, uh, his antics are it, the league's done with it. They're, they've had their fill. So, and Cyrus, I, I, yeah. I understand the league is done with it. Why aren't the Warriors? Because Steve Kerr, like, essentially defended what happened. Um, and, and this is, uh, what, a year after Draymond Green got suspended for punching his own teammate in the face. Right. So why, and and let's not forget what happened in the finals that, that cost the Warriors a chance at glory and a title. So why aren't the Warriors done with all of this? Because the Warriors, uh, for example, looking at the 2016 incident, uh, I think the Warriors and a lot of people still consider that to be an egregious suspension. I don't think people, a lot of people, members of Dub Nation, myself included, think that was way over the top to suspend a player uh, for those 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 kicks, whatever he was doing, to suspend him from an NBA Finals game. That was very extreme. Um, but the reason why ultimately, at, at least until now, why they've tolerated Draymond is because they have zero world championships without him. Um, he's one of the greatest defensive players of all time. Uh, and again, he is a fundamental reason for the Warriors having a dynasty. Um, him and Steve Kerr have a contentious relationship, but it's also they've been through a lot together. And, and Steve Kerr, taking a page from the Phil Jackson playbook, uh, manages Draymond Green in a very similar manner to the way Phil managed Dennis Rodman, mm-hmm. um, where you got to treat certain individuals very differently. 
And so that's the school of thought for Steve Kerr with Draymond. Now, look, after this incident, maybe they have had their fill. I don't know. Um, I, a lot of the discussion around the Warriors is what happens this season if this ends up being a bad year. I mean, Clay Thompson is not looking good. I mean, there's a lot of discussions now coming up that the Warriors might be a better team with Clay not starting, with Clay not getting starters minutes. And and Draymond Green, even though performance wise he's doing okay. He just lost. He just he, he got ejected. He's been ejected for two of the last three games, and now he's missing five more. That does affect the team directly. So maybe after this, there'll be a change. I don't know. But to answer your question, ultimately, this is a dynasty that sees the rewards that came with Draymond Green, and they consider these kinds of antics what comes with the territory. But um, who knows how much longer they stay patient with it? And again, winning solves a lot of things. Maybe solves everything but they're not winning right now. And if this continues where they keep losing, maybe they've had their fill and you'll see, you'll see some changes. Stay up to date on the Golden State Warriors by subscribing to Locked On Sports today and Locked On Warriors on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. Coming up, Justin Fields is back just in time to do what exactly? The Chicago Bears are three and seven and have languished with their backup quarterback for the last few weeks. They might be overselling it. Tyson Bajan has looked okay, and they've won some games in the absence of Justin Fields. Now Justin Fields is ready to return to the field, and Locked On Bears host Lauren Cox only knows why. Yeah, it's one of those questions. It's it's almost like, is it is it too late? Is seven games Mm. enough time to still prove anything? Because certainly he needs to have the best seven games of his career if he wants to retain a a starting position in Chicago for the long-term future. But the question is like, even if he has seven great games, do you finish the season going, all right, that seven games is enough. He's for sure our guy. Or do those seven games, how do those weigh against the first two and a half seasons of his bears career where you were always still trying to figure out like to me, seven games feels like maybe just enough of a sample size that if he can really be consistent for what's close to half of a season, you can feel like, okay, this is a guy who is taken a step and turned a corner here. But if you start to get into any sense of still doubt of like, well, he looked better at times, but we still have some questions. I don't know that the bears can afford to not make a change at quarterback just for the long-term health of their team. If I want to be petty, what I'll say here is they're putting Justin Fields in because they want to lose more games. And he's shown he's better at losing them than Tyson Bajant, which does not say nice things about Justin Fields, both the truth of that statistic and, the intent of the bit that I would be doing. But the thing here is, I don't know that there's anything Justin Fields can do the rest of this season to prevent the Bears from taking either Caleb Williams or Drake May. They're probably going to get a top two pick. They could go on a heater, sure, but the Carolina Panthers are not. They're going to be one of the two or three worst teams in the league this season season. So what exactly are you evaluating with Justin Fields? And you could end up hurting his trade value because if you're going to draft Caleb Williams or Drake May, then you got to trade Justin Fields. And if he stinks it up the second half of the season, what is his trade value really? Now, you probably don't worry about that. You give him the chance to maybe trick a team into saying, hey, maybe we think we can fix this guy. And maybe you win a couple games and you help the culture of this team. I believe in culture and trying to win. So you play your starters even in a lost season because you believe in building that foundation. The thing is, for Justin Fields in Chicago, it's over. It doesn't matter. And finally, after Los Angeles Angels GM Perry Manassian said the Angels were not rebuilding in any way, new manager Ron Washington echoed that aggressiveness. Your mindset... Your commitment and your attitude is what we're going to get out front with in the beginning. The work ethic is going to be developed from the first day that we hit the ground. And once we start to developing that work ethic and the young kids we got here and the veterans we have here and the people that are in control of things inside that clubhouse, I think as each day come and go, you would recognize that we are on our way up. We are on our way up. 
Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe for the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Coming up on the next Locked On Sports Today, what can you expect from week 11 of the NFL season? So at least until tomorrow, stay locked on sports today. Locked On Podcast Network presents Locked On Sports Today. For more episodes of Locked On Sports Today, go to our video on demand. Click on sports at the top of your screen. There you'll find past episodes of Locked On Sports Today, plus other Locked On shows on demand.